Hello, I'm Shane Plymel, and I'm here with Dr. Chris Barnett. We're both from Shannon. We both share the same passion for service and taking care of our patients. We're actually here to talk to you about COVID-19, the impact on our community, as well as our hospital. We're actually at a critical stage when it comes to COVID-19 when you look at the hospital. We've seen an increase or a spike in uh, COVID-19 hospitalizations over the last seven to 10 days. A lot of that is because we're seeing um, the positivity rate increase. That's led to more active cases uh, and with that more hospitalizations. That has a, had a huge impact on our ICU beds as well as our staffing. We're actually here to ask for your help. Um, one is by following the pop, proper precautions, we are saving lives and protecting and keeping our family, friends, and neighbors safe. The other big thing is we need to make sure that we're taking care of the people that are taking care of us, our doctors, our nursing staff, our clinical professionals in our service departments. That's part of what Chris and I uh, spend our time doing, making sure that we're taking care of the people that are taking care of you. And we're at a point now where it feels like we're running a, a marathon, but we're running at a pace that we cannot sustain it. We're at mile 20 and we can't, not we can't sustain this pace. So we really need your help in, in reducing the spread of this virus by following the proper precautions to ensure that um, we're looking after our doctors and our, our nursing and clinical professionals. The other big reason I think we need to look at reducing the spread of this virus is our businesses. We want to continue to have them open, our economy strong, and then also in-person school and all the great activities that come with it. So really, we're, we're, we're just asking for your help, specifically over the next um, few months we feel that there's a vaccine on the horizon soon. All, what we need to do is stay strong for each other and protect and keep each other safe. At this point, I'd like to talk to Dr. Barnett about ways to protect ourselves and also a little bit about high-risk patients. Uh, Dr. Barnett, can you talk to us a little bit about what the appropriate uh, ways we can protect our loved ones as we approach the Thanksgiving holidays? Yeah, thanks, Shane. And uh, as Shane just said, I know everybody's tired of the mantra uh, that you've heard over and over again, wash your hands, uh, wear a mask, and socially distance. But now the, it's more important than ever as we go into the holidays, a time that we typically gather with our friends and family. Uh, the weather's getting colder. We would most likely be having events indoors. Uh, that is, it is going to be critical that we practice uh, safe distancing, at least for the 2020 holidays, and with a vaccine just around the corner, it's very easy to think, uh, "Oh, I'll just let, I'll just wait for the vaccine and perhaps let down our guard." But really, now is not the time to do that. Uh, we have a few more months before a vaccine uh, realistically comes comes out. Uh, hopefully, if we all pay attention to uh, to our uh, taking care of our uh, of our loved ones and especially the high risk uh, uh, friends and families that we have, we will be able to uh, get vaccinated uh, in 2021 and look forward to a normal holidays next year. Uh, so some of those some of those things that have have come out recently, in addition to the masking, hand washing, etc., is to really consider. Uh, how you're going to celebrate the holidays with your family. The first thing to take into consideration is your family itself. Who is at high risk? Is that uh, grandma or grandpa or, or particular friends or other family members that may uh, develop severe symptoms if they were to get infected? You have to remember that 40% 40 percent of people who have COVID and spread the disease have no symptoms whatsoever. So the latest recommendations are to limit your gathering to 10 people or less uh, and if possible uh, consider having your event outdoors. The weather forecast for next week is not that bad uh, so that may be a possibility. If you have uh, anyone at your gathering other than your uh, direct family consider 
uh, keeping them separate, at least when masks are off and you're eating or drinking. Uh, so th those are some of the suggestions you hear uh, among, among others that may help us uh, get safely through this holiday season. Uh, that way we can get everybody uh, safely to a, uh, to a time of the year where they're going to have vaccines and then we can, start to, uh, we can start to let down our guard. Yeah, you've touched on it. It's kind of like, a, don't you feel like we're at the, we're kind of, we can see the finish line in the horizon with all the talk about the vaccines. We just need to be diligent in following the pop, proper precautions um, over the next few months until those vaccines are readily available. Yeah, I totally agree. Like say, like you said, we're getting toward the end of uh, what feels like a marathon, uh, but we have to be extremely cautious during this time of the year so that we're able to finish the race and go on to, you know, to run another race in the future. Yeah, we just can't lift, let our guard down. And uh, let me, let's talk about high risk patients because I think there's a lot of confusion around what's a high risk patient. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, and that's a great question. I think, I think uh, most people, myself included, you know, uh, prior to this pandemic, do, do not realize that a significant portion of our population is considered high risk. Uh, and in uh, some estimates, it's over 50% of the adult population of the United States. So it's more people than you might think. Uh, in addition to being, uh, uh, what's considered elderly, 65 and above, and especially 80 and above, uh, there are many other people who are considered high risk and have underlying medical, medical conditions. The medical conditions that we've seen that most affect people uh, in the hospital are obesity and diabetes. Uh, other medical conditions that, uh, that make people more susceptible to severe uh, COVID complications are uh, being immunocompromised either by taking medications, uh, chemotherapy, uh, cancer survivors, uh, and even uh, extreme elderly uh, people who are over 80 are considered immunocompromised because their immune system is not as strong as it is in a younger person. Uh, then of course there are uh, the conditions that uh, affect many people such as chronic lung disease, chronic heart disease, even hypertension is considered an underlying health condition. And uh, in the hospital, uh, we have seen that the vast majority of all those who get severe illness requiring hospitalization have one of these underlying conditions. They are, not the, they are not the majority of people who are positive, however. Our drive-through tests hundreds of patients a day now, and uh, most of the positives are in the younger age group. They're school children, uh, college students, uh, the 20 to 40 year old age group, uh, many of whom test positive, but they do not end up in the hospital. What we are hoping to avoid is having that group spread the illness uh, to the, the high risk, more vulnerable uh, uh, people in our community. Thank you. I, I, you know, I think the key is, um, again, wearing masks, social distancing, avoiding large crowds, washing our hands, and not touching our face. And if we do those things, we'll um, reduce the spread of this virus and really uh, keep our uh, family and loved ones safe. So thank you for your time and uh, y'all stay safe and have a great Thanksgiving.